All right, Zach, so this is actually not a swing, but this is when I asked you what was the good feel. And I'll leave it on here for you. And you said it was mainly making sure that you were starting to notice your divots were going to the right a little bit, so that means you're over the top of the plane a little bit. You gave a little more attention to getting it on plane, and that helped you hit it more solidly a little bit the last couple of weeks, and that's exactly what we see here on the video. Nicely on plane there. Parallel to the plane line through the top of your right shoulder there nicely. And the thing I'd still like you to give some attention to is still keep that left knee braced a little better on that back swing to where it doesn't straight up like it's straightening up there just a little bit. And then as a result on that down swing, remember it's getting out there a little bit. And then if when I put that circle on your head, we'll see that that um, still going to be going down a little bit because those legs are going out from you still a little bit. Not near as bad as a couple months ago. But just the more you can get braced with that, the better. And here we see the same thing with the driver. That left knee is getting straightened up just a little bit. And then it goes down a little more than we'd like, and your head goes down. But the path of the club head there, buddy, on that downswing is glorious. Absolutely glorious. And the shaft being right with that line parallel to it is quite nice. In fact, look at this, buddy. I draw this, let's say, for an orange line here. On the back swing, watch this, Mike, if you would, please. And then when it comes around into the follow through, just about in the same place. So that's the nice kind of simplicity you want with your shaft. So even into your follow through there, man, see how it's still kind of parallel to all those lines. So that thing is just spinning around your torso in a very simple kind of a manner. And then continue to keep being good at picking those targets. You know, and again, glad the chipping's getting better. Glad you're getting used to that. That'll save you a lot of strokes. And then uh, look forward to hearing about the good putting and chipping and pitching continuing. Again, any other thoughts or questions? This is Joel Suggs. I sure enjoyed meeting you down at the Cincinnati Golf Show this weekend and showing you your swing on the 2D equipment that I have. And so I want to take about two or three minutes to just show you around metal length. This is the studio I use in the winter for all my students. You see there's a down the line camera angle for our 2D equipment. And then we have a face on camera angle also. And then what we also have here is 3D equipment to where I can show you your swing from six different camera angles with this 3D equipment. And we can get your swing from down to the 120th of a, one one hundred twentieth of a second in terms of exactly what your hips, shoulders, and hands are doing in the swing. And then also, we, I have the most realistic hitting curve I've ever seen from PuttersEdge.com. So when you hit your full shot, it feels as realistic as possible. And then I have three different green speeds for you to practice your putting. 9.5 on the step meter, 10.5 on the step meter, and 12.5 on the step meter. That's benefited my students tremendously. And then also I have a lot of learning aids like this smart stick. And you can see the rest of those learning aids over here in my bag that we can work on to help you learn the certain fields in the golf swing that you and I both want. And then also I help my students a lot with their equipment through the winter. This is a frequency analyzer where we twang your club and it gives us a reading here. And then also we plot your whole set, each club on this, these lines to see if the set is really matched or not. Quite often they aren't and it helps my students tremendously when they find out what clubs are the offending clubs. And then if we get tired of being indoors and we want to go outdoors and hit time, we can do that. It's my daughter. Ellie, good to see you. I haven't seen her in weeks. No wonder you've been gone, Ellie. You've been out here playing in the snow all this time. But this is our natural turf area. This is closed until April, as you can see. Uh, but it's a fantastic area where we can step outside and hit some balls and get some real ball flight. Or, if we get pretty satisfied that things are looking better on the video here, we're kind of cooped up inside and want to go outside, we can step on out and hit balls and see real ball flight for about 5 or 10 or 15 minutes, however long you and I can stand the cold, out into the air, and we see them land at these different flags. I have a yardage book for this driving range. It's the first one I've ever seen in my life where we know exactly what it is for the front, back, and middle of each green. And again, the covered area here is heated, so we stay out there for about 5, 10, 15 minutes, like I said. It enables us to see some ball flight. 
and then we get satisfied that things are looking the way we want, and we come back inside, take off our coat, and look again at the video equipment to see how this one's looking, to make sure that you understand it. And then notice too, my exercise ball up top here, and then also, so I help my students a lot with their fitness through the winter, and then I will help you also with your sports psychology, with your golf psychology from the golfpsych.com people down in Texas. That's helped my students tremendously a lot over the years too. So again, I sure enjoyed meeting you down at the Cincinnati Golf Show this weekend. I look forward to seeing you again out here this summer at Meadowlinks, or even right now in the winter. I have a lot of people that work on their games with me right through the winter. Check out more information about the things I do to help you at joelsuds.com. Take care.